Hello and welcome to your sixth UDK tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be doing about the grid and about brush order. So to start off with let's do some bits on the grid. So let's just do a CSG add and let's go ahead and also change our brush to a sheet and let me just see where I am in these perspectives. Alright that's not quite what I'm looking for so let's just scale it up a bit. I didn't mean uniform scaling. Oh wait, yeah, I did because it's a sheet. I keep thinking I'm working with a cube. Okay, so that seems about right. We're going to have a sheet with a cube on top. So let's just CSG add that and hide our build brush. Okay, so at the moment we have a sheet with the cube halfway in between. Let's just move our cube so that he is on top. Okay, so and again we're going to rebuild our geometry. And okie dokie, so let's just click away. We now have a cube that's perfectly sitting on top of this sheet. You can zoom in as much as you like, that is perfectly sitting on top, and there is no gap in between. So let's have a look at one of our grids. I'm going to go ahead and look at the side view for this one. And you'll see that the lines are perfectly matched up. Now, okay, why is this? Well, that's a good question. So if we right click our cube, my cube, if you right click the brush over here, it shows you the preset values. So our x value for our cube preset is 256, the y is 256, and the z is 256. So why the hell is it 256? What a strange number. Well, what it is, is 256 is divisible by 8. Now, I scaled up the sheet, so I'm not quite sure of the size of it, but I scaled it up so that, in fact, yeah, I did. I scaled it up to a value that fits on these grid lines, which means it must be divisible by eight, and its width, its um, yeah, its width is also divisible by. Eight. In this case, it happens to be one because it's an extremely thin sheet. So, because they both fit onto the grid lines, they can perfectly match up to make a really clean cut uh, collision, basically. So, because that works so well. That's why it works. If we just go ahead and delete this sheet here, didn't quite do that right. If we just delete that and rebuild our geometry, so it's definitely gone. Well, let's create another sheet. Let's change our sheet um, brush. So let's right click sheet up here and let's. Oh, that's rubbish. I lied. Let's change our cube. So let's, let's show our builder brush first just so we can see what's going on cube and let's change it. So we want our x value to be something quite big so let's go with 560 and the y to be 560 and the z to be something relatively low. So before it was 1 which is divisible by 8 but okay so what happens if it's not divisible by 8? Well I'm going to go ahead and show you. So z let's put that as I don't know uh, 10 so there's 10. Well, if we build that and go ahead and CSG add, well, it, it looks okay, I guess. It, it doesn't look too bad. Let's, let's zoom in a bit closer. Aha, uh -huh, could you see that there? I'm not sure if you could. It was only for a split second. It's difficult to get the angle. But you might... There we go. You can see there is actually a small gap between the cube and the floor. And if we look into our grid, you can see this some more. Did that rhyme? Yeah, if we look into our grid, you'll see this isn't quite lined up properly. Did that rhyme again? Whoa, I'm on fire. Um, let's go and try and move this. And uh, Oh, look, it doesn't, doesn't quite line up properly. It just jumps around where it needs to go. And that is because... Well, it's, it's because of this, obviously, not because of the cube. I, should, I moved basically the wrong thing, but you, you'll see it jumps around. It doesn't quite go where it's supposed to. We need to exactly sit on top. It says, too bad, that's not on the grid because I've got obviously the snap to grid on. So try and make everything fit to the grid. It'll make things like a hundred times easier. Everything will cleanly snap together. When you're making a room, the walls and the floor and the roof, everything will fit together really, really, really nicely. And you can change your grid size if we just go down here, click this. It's on 16 at the moment. I can have something smaller like four perhaps, and you'll see, there we go. Or I can have something bigger such as 
64, and you'll see, well, there's a huge little grid square. Huge little? That didn't make any sense. Those are huge grid squares. So that is the grid. Try and use it as much as possible, and it's just an awesome tool. I don't know what the hell I would do without the grid. So that's the grid. Let's keep our cube here and remove our sheet to show you the next thing, which is, let's remove our stupid builder brush, which is brush order. So I'm just going to rebuild my geometry. Okay, so we have our cube here, and let's just bring back our builder brush. And I forgot we changed the cube preset. What was it on? It was on, was it 256? I really hope that's divisible by 8. That looks about right. Yep, that's correct. So let's just go ahead and move this using our translation tool. And let's just move it. Let's go all the way up here. Okay, so it's a classic example we've had before. We're intersecting up here. Never guess what I'm going to do. I'm going to use our CSG subtract like that. Okay, so that worked out pretty well. It worked perfectly fine. We've done this before. So let's move our builder brush again. This time, let's move it to the top corner of our subtract brush, like that. Obviously, you can see it in the viewports, but not in the perspective viewport, because obviously it's invisible in the perspective viewport. But if we just do this, and if I do a CSG add here, hang on a minute, what's happening? Why is there a cube being made when it clearly intersects with the GSC, so, so, uh, CSG subtract? Why is this cube being made? Well, and by the way, it isn't just a rebuild geometry thing. If I do this, it's not going to change anything. There we go. It still isn't doing it. Well, what it is, is it's because it takes account of the order in which you do things. If you make something, remove part of it, and then make something else on top of it, it literally does that. It'll make something else on top of it. So this is called brush order. It does exactly what you've told it to. Make something, remove something, and then add something afterwards. That's the key thing here. It's adding something after it's already removed it. So, okay, what about if we want our subtract brush to actually subtract everything within it still? We don't want to care about this brush order rubbish. Well, let's just select it first of all. And go ahead and right click it. Go to order. And what you can do is we want to put it to last. So then what will happen is it will go, okay, create cube A, then create cube B then subtract the stuff in the cube. I hope this is kind of making sense. So even though these changes haven't made effect, we just need to build our geometry. And oh well, would you look at that? Now it's having the desired effect. So if I just move that. And perfect. That's exactly the awesome looking image I was looking for. So brush order, it's kind of a pain sometimes, but it does really make sense if you're making something and then want to build something on top of it. If the, um, if the CSG subtract is just getting in your way, it'd be a right pain. So brush order is there for a reason, and without it, certain tasks would just be unbelievably annoying. So it's there for a reason. Use that. Use the grids. That's the end of this lesson, and have a nice day.